Monday, Monday, Monday. Wake up, everybody. What is up? And welcome to the DNBR Nuggets podcast. Let's go. We are top rated sportsbook app. Use promo code DNBR when you sign up. Kale, throw that beautiful graphic up. Yes, this is Derby. Did we lose Kale? Is he already got there? He is. Oh, it, yeah. Don't we doubt Kale. Four days. In just four days, we are going to be in Serbia. In three days, we're going to be on an airplane. That's four actually days. Kale crowd surfing in that crowd. <laughs> <it's in laughs> now. Wow, it's a picture <laughs> from the future. Uh, I would love to see Kale crowds, crowd surf. That would be great. Five days, we're going to be at Beer Fest. Yes, Beer Fest in yeah. Belgrade, Serbia. I cannot wait. So hyped for this trip. So many great things coming together for us, and I am very excited to share all of that with you. Don't forget, stay locked to us on all platforms, YouTube, podcast, uh, social media, thednvr.com. We're going to have all kinds of cool stuff. Like, honestly, the most content in DNVR Nuggets history will, it, in my opinion, will happen from Friday of this week till Friday of next week. Just a flood of content. Some you asked for. Some you didn't ask for. Some you didn't know you wanted. All coming your way as we experience Serbia, and we want you to feel like uh, you're there along for the ride with us. Um, guys, I got the squad. I got the fellas here down below in the V-neck, the deep V. Brennan Vote. Back where we belong, DNVR1. That's right, fellas. Got a theory. I think Wynn's just hanging out at the old Lakewood office. If you look closely, it kind of looks, <laughs> looks like it. That's such a that's, that's a joke for us three and no one right. else. Yeah, like, no yeah. One. <laughs> the old I never want to step foot back in that office, though. <laughs> Great news. You never will. Uh, yes, God. from an undisclosed lo- location, it is Harrison Wynn. Please only refer to me uh, by my Serbian name, Harry Vinyakna. That's that's how I'll be referred refer to from now on. Harry is a good name, though. We don't call you Harry enough. We should call you Harry. Harry yeah. is like, that's a likable guy, Harry. Harrison. Good, good guy. Yeah. Good yeah. guy. Harrison, like, come on. That's like, that's like Mr. You know, like, you can't. It's too, it's formal. too formal. Yeah. It's too, too formal. formal. Harry. Come on. Everybody likes Harry. <laughs> Uh, on today's show, guys, we're going to break down the Christmas Day slate. Very excited for that. The Nuggets are back. We're going to talk about who got snubbed, who are you most excited for, and what are your takeaways. I have a surprising amount of takes on the Christmas schedule. Like That's actually not surprising. Just to You don't think know. that's surprising? As your friend, it's not very surprising <laughs> that you have takes. Well, I have takes. Uh, we're also going to do some headlines from around not just the Nuggets, but from around the globe. There's headlines around the globe that we're going to get to. But first, guys, the schedule dropped. The Denver Nuggets are back. Back playing the Phoenix Suns. I believe, and I have it on somewhat good authority, the Nuggets will be the nightcap. I don't think the times have officially been announced yet or even unofficially announced. But I believe the Nuggets will be the nightcap against the Phoenix Suns. I want to break down all of the games, but this is a Nuggets show, so I want to start there. Harrison. Are you surprised at all that the Nuggets are playing on Christmas? Are you surprised they're playing the Phoenix Suns? And how would you grade that matchup? I'm not surprised they're back on Christmas. The amount of blowback the league got last year from not having the MVP on Christmas, they they couldn't deal with that again. They did. They did, man. They did. Publicly and privately like the nuggets were pissed that entire season about it like the amount of times michael malone unprompted brought up how the mvp wasn't played on christmas they couldn't have that again now he's the two-time mvp so i'm not surprised i'm hyped it's the suns this is a 10 out of 10 matchup man this is an a plus christmas day matchup this is the best potential matchup i think wow second in my opinion would have been philly but well, you're getting ahead of us for a segment here, but sure. but go for it. But yes, it's a good one. But the, the Suns are my number one matchup, you know, for the Nuggets on a marquee Christmas day game right now. I'm 10 out of 10 hype for it. By you vote. Yeah, I'm fully into the Suns. Suns or Clippers would have worked. A little surprised. Uh the Clippers aren't there. I know we'll talk about that in a second. Maybe I'm not as surprised now that I think I say that out loud. But Suns and Nuggets are two presumably of the best teams out west, best teams in the league. And there's a little bit of a history there. At least those fan bases know it, different perspectives on it. Really excited for this one. And being back on Christmas, I actually thought welcome break last year. And the truth is the Nuggets had kind of stunk it up a bit in those Christmas showcases. But back to back MVP, the guys are turning. They gotta be in there. They're one of the more fun teams to watch. 
whether that's on everyone's radar or not. So not surprised. I I'm not surprised either. I, I do think it puts proper context on why they weren't last year. You Harrison, it's funny because you kind of frame this almost as if the NBA got shamed into putting the nuggets back. I almost feel like, Last year, they were like, well, they don't have their whole team, whatever. Should they still have put the MVP on? In my opinion, no question. Like, mm -hmm. They should be pushing Jokic as one of the faces of the league. They clearly have no interest in doing that. And we're going to get to some of the names. They are clearly sending a signal that are becoming the face. Mm -hmm. and it's laughable to me. But they should be doing that. And I do feel like this was a correction to, okay, their team is back together. They're back to being you know, relevant on a national stage. Right. Let's put them out there. And, and so to me, it is sort of a sign that the, the Nuggets are back on, I don't want to say the main stage, but they're back in tier two. <laughs> like they're back in tier two. Tier one is still the Lakers, the Warriors, the Knicks. You know, it's still the same Pete, Kevin Durant. Like they're still the same players slash people. But I do feel like the Nuggets now are back in that next one where, where the NBA is at least saying, hey, this is probably a team that is going to have a longer arc than most like they're going to be around and relevant throughout the whole season to me it's a hint of that do you guys feel i mean you could pick a couple teams but with the nuggets kind of leaving a spot vacant in whatever this thing is we're articulating i kind of felt like that left room for like memphis to really sort of jump up they were fun to watch they were talked about as a fun team an interesting matchup for other teams and now they're kind of one of the teams that i think with the Nuggets coming back healthy, the Clippers as well, maybe they're bumped out a little bit more. But I, I do think the Nuggets are – you either view them as a contender or a team that's knocking on the door. And I, I think even if they're not necessarily everyone's favorite team to talk about, they're a team that's that's worth putting on this stage. And they've earned it yeah. through very consistent regular season success. And that, that's just a fact. Yeah, I mean, the Nuggets are like – low-key kind of a blockbuster man with the back-to-back -back MVP a guy who's in the conversation for best player in the league Jamal Murray who's you know we've forgotten about him because he hasn't played in a game in 18 months but when Jamal Murray's playing like he is a, a very like he's got a high Q score he's a popular young player like he's he, he's on the rise man Michael Porter Jr. Aaron Gordon like Nuggets low-key have a lot of names like like they have some blockbuster potential. And if you think about where Nuggets are going to start off next year and where they could be at Christmas when Jamal Murray's two months into the season, like good luck holding him under 30 minutes a game against the Suns on Christmas. Uh, like he could be finding his footing by then. Michael Porter Jr. could be finding his footing by then. Like the Nuggets could be a story of the NBA by Christmas Day. Sure. I wonder if they will be. I mean, honestly, we'll have to see how all of this stuff breaks. The Nuggets, so many outcomes are possible for them. But there is a chance. Christmas is when the dust starts to settle. The NFL season's starting to get closer to winding down. The NBA has a big enough sample size that you're like, okay, where are the teams? In fact, isn't it, Harrison, do you remember every year, is it Christmas? Where if you look at the standings, yeah. they're pretty accurate. Like they, they pretty much tell you who is going to be in the playoffs. Maybe a team climbs one or two, one spot or falls a spot. But for the mm -hmm. most part, you know, so there is a chance that the Nuggets Suns are one, two in the Western Conference. And then that game becomes even more important as the sort right. of like, hey, we put these teams together because we actually think they're among the best. I actually think it's going to work out that way where both of those teams by Christmas are probably top five teams for sure, but probably top four teams in the West. And, and that'll make for a really good game and maybe propel the Nuggets from that moment on to being one of the stories of the season and therefore one of the teams of the season that everybody kind of tunes into. I also think they have two players now. I mean, Jokic, obviously back-to-back -back MVP, but you know, those players that just for whatever reason are flashy, grab attention. People like to talk about them and watch them. Porter is absolutely going to be one of them if he's playing. Yeah. And then I think sophomore Bones Highland, who yeah, seems yeah. to be in the discourse uh, outside of the Denver stuff more than a lot of guys that have come through in my years. Why, why do you think that is? Hmm. Why? What is it? <laughs> what do you think? Why do you think that he is part of the discourse? I'm being serious about this. Actually, well, because he, put, he puts himself into a lot of it. Actually, uh, I think where, but, where does uh, he put himself into the discourse? Where Where does he become a part of? On this? the DNBA show? No. <laughs> On Twitter? <laughs> Very interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> you 
because this brings me to like if there's one game that's to me at least sticks out like a sore thumb it's memphis golden state you've got the reigning champs and the number one draw in all of the nba the golden state warriors it's not the lakers the most popular team right now is the golden state warriors the most popular player is steph curry is memphis golden state a rivalry like in your mind do you see memphis golden state as a rivalry no, but they had a theory. there's there's the there, there's a rival rivalry like kindling there. Is it's, there is there a rivalry kindling here? Like I'm being dead serious about this. Is I this think is, so. Yeah. Here's my, here's my point. The NBA more than any other league leans into Twitter and online conversation more than anything. Like the Warriors and the Grizzlies are a rivalry on Twitter and on Reddit and nowhere else. Like Memphis, first of all, is a small market. Memphis this year, like, we'll see if they're going to be. I personally, I'm not predicting that Memphis will be like a top three seed. I don't know that this is going to be a one versus two type matchup between these two teams. We'll see. I could be wrong on that. But Jaron Jackson Jr. getting off to this low start. What has happened is the NBA loves this BS manufactured drama, not the drama of like, hey, these are the two teams that are going up against each other. But these guys had a Twitter beef. They had a Twitter beef. And what happened after this game was announced? John Morant at Draymond Green is like our plan worked like oh look I told we we talked it into spoke it into existence to me I look at this and I go the NBA is so dumb they can't sell their own drama they sell this they sell the Twitter drama the fake and then Draymond quotes him like heck yeah you know little brother we did it and it's like you did what you successfully created the dumbest version of the NBA and got elevated to its main stage this is my soapbox Okay, I'm not as mad about it. I, yeah, the NBA is definitely doing what they can to make this something, but I don't think it's nothing. I mean, I think it's there's. Nothing. I don't <laughs> think so, man. No, I don't. I don't think so. I, I I think like John Morant wants to be a rival with anybody, and <laughs> so dumb. Well, <laughs> Who is Golden State's rival? Who wants to be a rival with anybody? There's nothing I, lamer than this. No, but I think, I mean, Golden State doesn't really have a rival right now. I think they're kind of above and beyond sure. it. They've survived and, and endured, out endured, right. outlasted so many iterations. And you, can, you can't book like Brooklyn. Like there could be maybe the KD angle of that, but you right. can't book KD because we don't know where he'll be. So By the way, I he might it, be in Phoenix. <laughs> I see it as an intriguing matchup. I wouldn't call it a rivalry yet. And I think... Uh, it's you know. Christmas, though. This is my point, though, vote. It's Christmas. Because you're right. I'm not saying it's a bad game. I'm sure. not saying it's not something. I'm saying you got elevated to number one marquee matchup in the NBA is now the Warriors because they're the top billing. And it's sure. Christmas, which is the top day. And who do we stick them with? John Morant and the Memphis Grizzlies. This is, to me, a loud symbol of the NBA saying this. is. It's like when the Pelicans got it two years ago. Zion's like rookie season. Right. It was the NBA saying we want Zion to be the next guy. This is the next that we want this to happen. This is the NBA saying, we want the Grizzlies to be the team that everybody's plugged into. And I'm looking at it and I'm going, they're maybe the fourth most interest, third most interesting young team right now to me out, out West. And I just, to me, it feels so fake. The only reason they got elevated is because they had this Twitter online fake wrestling style beef. I I mean, they were also really good last year, too. Right. And they, they they're going to be really good this year, too. Like, that's probably a reason as well. In the face <laughs> of all the injuries, John Morant did sort of rise. Like, he filled some vacancies in terms of the stars and the guys that are worth watching. And, you know, we can have our, our own conversations about where he ranks amongst the very best players. But as far as kids sitting down and watching on Christmas and getting excited and wanting that jersey and this or that – you know, John Morant leading a young Memphis team. There's plenty there. I do think a big part of this, though, is, is I double down on it. I just don't think there's a natural rival for Golden State. So you got to do a little bit of reaching yeah. for this matchup either way. It's not. But the marquee game on Christmas should be a finals rematch. Like, how is that not a thing? That's a good point. How, how is That's just that point. the marquee afternoon it's ABC stage. game not a finals rematch. This is my point is you're putting the Memphis Grizzlies on center stage. Sure. And I'm looking at it this going, why they're a good team. I'm not taking that away from them, but why are they there? By the way, if Denver played golden state, I would kind of be like, wow, Denver punching above its weight class right now that they're putting them on center stage against the top athletes. We're putting Memphis there. And I'm just like, 
I don't see I what that. the difference is between them and the Phoenix Suns because and they played the Warriors in the playoffs last year. Like that's so did probably Dallas. so did Dallas in the conference finals. So did the Boston Celtics in the finals. Like the, right. they, Memphis played them there in the semis, and we're we're here acting like this is my whole point. It comes down to the fact that it's a Twitter beef. And by the way, I don't even think Memphis is the – like Anthony Edwards might be a more compelling – if you want a young guy on the national stage, he might be that guy. So I don't know. I just find that that matchup to me was the one that I looked at and I go, the NBA wants Memphis the way they wanted Zion two years ago to become a new face. They want Memphis too. And I just look at it and I go, I am betting Memphis has a massive regression year and that this – Maybe not by Christmas, because I think by Christmas it's still early enough that we could talk ourselves into anything. Sure. But I kind of have yeah. a feeling that this will be a side story of like, oh, Memphis, that's right, the play-in team that was somehow our marquee, marquee matchup of Christmas Day. That's my, that's my perspective on it. I just found it a little bit strange. Um, the other games that get scheduled, 76ers-Knicks. The Knicks are like the Pass. Detroit Lions. The Knicks are, they're like the Detroit Lions. You have to have the East Coast game. They're always on Christmas. Or Christmas. They're always the morning game. 76ers are going to get to smack. I mean, I, part of me wishes this happened for Denver, that Denver got like whatever the equivalent of the, oh. I guess it would be the Lakers. Some team where you're like, sweet, right. we're going to win by 30 and look great <laughs> on national television. Let's do it. Um, so that game's happening. I heard Lakers Mavericks is, will be number two. We'll see if that's the case or not. Hot take. It's a great game. Lakers Mavericks? Yeah. Does it belong? It. Like, do they deserve to have the marquee? No. Like the Lakers always get there. I actually think this will be a very entertaining one. Luca LeBron is always a good matchup. I agree. Since mm -hmm. he's gotten the league, those regular season games have been really good. And that's what this is. It's a regular season marquee. So I think not surprised that they shoehorn the Lakers in there. And then the Mavericks is a really fun game. And that angle of what Luca does at his age versus what LeBron's doing at his age is just going to be there. And they're, oh, they yeah. go at each other. They go at each other. I mean, who, who's going to write the article comparing Luca to LeBron and like, that, that, that will happen before that game. But I think what you're saying about the league wanting to elevate John Morant and the Grizzlies, they want to do the same thing with Luka and the Mavs. Like, <laughs> There's a real they, difference, though, here. There's a real difference. One of those guys is likely to be the face of the league going forward. One of those guys is like almost impossible to be. Like He'll be one of the guys, one of the characters. Yeah. But the reason, because I see some people like saying, like disagreeing. Here's why. Here's why this is important to me. Christmas games are the league's way of saying this is what's important. Like that's that's the marquee game. It has been for for decades. This is the league's way of saying here's what the NBA is this year. And then just putting Memphis in there. To me, I'm like, hey, they're a good team, but are they really the story of the season? Like, come on. God, I I love the way it's the Celtics just kind of like yeah. I mean, they were in the finals, but did I mean you know. But you what? know what? Something Bucks is like the best game of the day, and I believe they're giving it top billing. I think that's going to be the two thirty game. Like that's a great game. Two really good teams. They they just as much as I you could see a Celtics going against the Warriors or this or that. I know that's a good Bucks matchup. Plus, real... I mean, we want to see how that goes when Giannis has his second best player. I mean, right. come on. So I think it'll be good. But Lakers, look, Knicks and Lakers just have to be on TV. If I had to pick one team that I wanted to watch the Lakers play and I don't want to watch them play. But if there's one, it would be Dallas. Like Luca LeBron is to me is just a compelling matchup. So I'm okay with it. Um, let's take a quick break. On the other side though, I want to talk about the snubs. Cause again, Christmas is a day for the, the NBA to tell you what's important to them. A couple big names are not playing on Christmas, both teams and players. And I think that's kind of noteworthy as well. Ivanka, the new goat in Colorado sports, the greatest of all TV. Ivanka TV delivers amped up sports coverage for Colorado fans featuring Altitude Sports, AT&T Sportsnet, the NFL Network as well. Get the most regional content for the lowest price for sports in Colorado, all in crystal clear HD while using less bandwidth. And enjoy over 60 entertainment channels as well. News, movies, a lot more. You get a lot more than just sports with Ivanka TV. Turn your home into the ultimate game viewing zone. You can even stream your teams right from your phone or laptop or tablet when you're on the go as well. Ivaca, it's only $25 a month plus a $5 receiver. But right now, Colorado sports fans can get $10 off per month for your first three months. To get that deal, go to Ivaca.tv slash Colorado 10. Ivaca.tv slash Colorado 10. No contracts, no hidden fees with Ivaca TV. It's made for champions of the remote. So check them out, ivaca.tv slash 
Colorado 10 to get that discount. Uh, also, Athletic Greens, it's something I use literally every day. I started taking Athletic Greens because I just wanted more energy, wanted an optimized immune system. And so Athletic Greens gives me all of that. One delicious scoop of Athletic Greens, you're getting 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole foods, source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens. It's time to reclaim your health, arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. Athletic Greens, it's a one-stop shop, one scoop and a cup of water every day. They're going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash nuggets to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. By the way, Athletic Greens sent us a travel pack for Serbia. They hooked it up. So we got have requested that. You may have forgotten. Well, there you go. I was so, about to say, we're going to need Athletic Greens to get us through. Oh, Serbia. my God. We're going to need it so bad. Uh, so we got all of those going. Um, another thing that's interesting about Christmas this year, the NFL has pulled in. Roger Goodell has pulled in on Adam Silver's block, and he's setting up shop. Three NFL games, including, by the way, the Broncos, uh, are playing the Rams that game. So the Cronkies split. Well, first of all, here, here's a fun one. Josh Kroenke, in attendance for Rams, or in attendance for Nuggets, in attendance for neither? Or Rams. Both. Rams. 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 There Rams. you go. Well, you that's an easy one. Rams. But I will <laughs> say there is no red-haired stepchild at KFC. <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised you guys say that. I mean, I'll be curious to see which one it is as well. Um, but it is just kind of funny that they both play. By the way, also Cardinals and Suns both play on Christmas. So Broncos – and Nuggets both play on Christmas, Cardinals and, and Suns. And they're with the if the Nuggets are the last game, there will be a little overlap. Like the, the first quarter will probably be over before the mm -hmm. football game ends. So there'll be a little overlap, which is a little strange because the local television market makes up a good percentage of that for these games. Yeah. Uh, I actually feel a little bad for the NBA just getting the rug pulled out from under them on Christmas. I, I feel I feel for them a little bit. I love yeah. the Christmas games. Uh, they, they, you know what? They've done a very bad job of, of holding on to their, their corner of the world. I, I agree with you, Harrison. Yeah. Um, all right. Biggest snubs for Christmas Day. Biggest snubs. Last year, it was Nikola Jokic and the Denver Nuggets. They were the number one snub. This year, vote, who do you think is the biggest snub for Christmas? Uh, I mean, I, Clippers for me. Um, yeah, Clippers, Wolves. You can't put the Nets in there because you don't know what the Nets are. Uh, the, the Nets, Wolves, like, the, are you kidding me? The Nets are the ones holding up the schedule. Schedule should have been out two weeks ago, or at least <laughs> last week. The Nets, I, Adam Silver, will, they'll have zero national television. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I really like the Clippers. I mean, everyone wants to talk about the Cl Clippers as a sleeping juggernaut. So them on, on TV could have made sense to me. But I don't hate the slate at all. Kind of reaching a little bit. Wolves, I think, are going to be a really fun regular season team, but they also have to go out and show that and earn that. Maybe it's a next Christmas thing. I, I agree with yeah, that. Like, I don't yeah. think they, I don't think they would have gotten it, but I do. I do think that they're a team that I'd look at and go. I would be more interested in them, but whatever. Oh, the Heat. Yeah, the, the Wolves. The Wolves have to earn it. The Wolves have to earn it. Maybe they will yeah. this season, and they'll, they'll be on Christmas next year. The one the thing I would say, though, Anthony Edwards might be the face of the league in like five years or four years or something. Like easy, that. easy, man. Come on, More easy. So than, uh, well, we'll see, man. He's a great personality. Easy. He's a great player. I, to me, he's a guy you can see. But the NBA did this with Zion two years ago, and I feel like maybe they learned a lesson of like, hey, to your point. We got to let guys earn it, and you earn it through playoffs and, and, and those things. Yeah. Look, if you're a Miami Heat fan, you're pissed. Like, they were the number one seed in the East last year. But, I mean, let's be honest. Nobody really wants to watch the Miami Heat. Like, come on. So the only reason I would want to see the Miami Heat is because they do have, like, their games are intense, right? Like, you, have, you know they're going to take it seriously, in other sure. words. So there's yeah. that, like, in a perfect world, the Knicks get thrown out and Miami's on. Right. You know, Miami versus Philly is a significantly more compelling game than Knicks-Philly, but whatever. These, yeah. This Miami run is so hilarious. I mean, like, people are so reluctant to embrace a team that's been really good for three years and in theory should be a market that gets over. And then everyone's just like, you go through the best teams in the NBA and who's contenders, and at some point in the list you go – and the heat, ugh, I guess. Right. <laughs> I think, yeah, they're just kind of boring. I think, to, like, Atlanta is a team that is more fun, but same thing. They had such a down year last year. I do think Atlanta – if you're just asking me about fun, like, look, the Lakers 
to me, I, I don't think they should be on there. But if you're just saying fun, Atlanta is a team that at least you're going to have like <laughs> Trey Trey Young, top shit talker in the NBA right now. What what not the top, but one of the top guys. Dejounte Murray is like doing everything he can. I don't. Was it just? Is San Antonio hide these things? Does nobody talk about players when they're in San Antonio? I had no idea Dejounte Murray was this big of a shit talker. That might be the. Yeah. If you want to have a lineup of like goofiness, you should get Memphis versus Atlanta. That would have been the like trash talking young guys. <laughs> That's actually an awesome game. <laughs> That's like the Twitter beef Olympics right there. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like Memphis and Atlanta are not are pretty close to each other. Like that's a short drive yeah. or whatever. So you could get a little bit of a rivalry there. I um, actually like that. That should have been like the fir- like let's just if the Knicks weren't playing, if it was a perfect world. If the world, Knicks and Lakers didn't get yeah. grandfathered in every year, yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm fine having the Lakers on there because the Lakers have, like, huge bust potential, which would be really fun <laughs> on Christmas. But um, oh, be a good Christmas year two of wind running this bit. <laughs> <laughs> but Memphis and Atlanta as kind of the, the early morning opener for – you know, the finals rematch that That'd should be, be so the, the marquee game would be cool. Like, okay, these two teams are up and coming. Then you get to the established, you know, contenders. That, that'd be a cool format. Yeah, that'd be a fun one. Um, yeah, as you mentioned, Brooklyn can't be a snub. Um, the Clippers are interesting. The Clippers deserve it on name recognition. The West is tough. Like, the Warriors were always going to get a game. The Lakers were always going to get a game. Do you pit those guys against each other? That's kind of a lame game. Lakers versus Warriors is like, I have to roll my eyes. So now they're split yeah. up. There's just not that much room. So do you make it Lakers Clippers as your Christmas game? Right. I don't like that. Like, yeah. it's just hard. So somebody had to be the odd man out. And I feel like it was them more than anyone else. And by the way, if you had to pick one team to not be healthy for Christmas, Nuggets maybe, but Clippers definitely have <laughs> yeah. <not. laughs> maybe Nuggets. Well, that's the thing. I think the Nuggets took the Clippers spot. It's probably, yeah. if it's not, the, yeah. the the Nuggets is the Clippers, probably. You know, Adam Silver was pissed about that one too. They're like, "Hey, we have to put Denver over the Clippers." Like, ah, he like had he here. had the latest battle for LA like word mark drawn up in his office, just ready to go. <laughs> and then this, they talked him out of it. And he was, you know, he was pissed about that. So it brings us. What is the number one? You said this already, Harrison. But the number one matchup you want to see this year is Nuggets Suns for Nuggets. Yeah, yeah, Nuggets Suns for sure. Um. I just think there's real rivalry potential there. I mean, you got the playoff series that happened a couple of years ago. There's, I think there's definitely bad blood there still between the two teams. The fan bases hate each other. Right. Nuggets fans don't think the Suns are good. Suns fans don't think the Nuggets are good. Jamal Murray kills Devin Booker and the Suns every time he plays them. Like, if you go back and look at Jamal Murray's game logs against the Suns, he murders Devin Booker every single time. I, I just think there's a lot there. They're, you know, in the same conference, of course. They're both really good. They got star power. Um, I, I just think there's a lot of potential there. I do love that it's, by the way, also in Denver. It does make, make mm-hmm. I, I do like that. It also could be the Jamal Murray, you know, that's about when we kind of project him to be getting his legs under him, right? We right. think it'll yep. be up until Christmas when, when he starts to, hopefully when he starts to turn it on a little bit. What's your number one Nuggets matchup vote? It probably is the Suns. I mean, we we somewhat did this with the rivalry. I know I have this Clippers fetish right now. I'm still in there because I kind of want – I kind of think there can only be one with the Nuggets and the Clippers here as, like, the team that got healthy, and now everyone should be scared. And there's two of them. And I, I, I just want the Nuggets to reign supreme there. And I also think as much as the, the Clippers have improved on paper since that matchup, so have the Nuggets. So I'd be interested in that one. But it's probably the sun still all the same. I was thinking about this, and I'm not really trying to start it. Just the, the whole, if only Jamal Murray was healthy thing. The whole bit was, ha, 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 their second best player tore his ACL. And you're like, yeah, what's funny about that? I know. <laughs> I know. They're, they're, they're really lame, and I hope that I really hope the Nuggets. Here's the, the thing. Joke. <laughs> the Nuggets, when they were on Christmas last and played Zion, they let us down so hard. They like They just came out so flat, and you're just like, come on, guys, take it serious. We want – you guys to have this respect that you clearly don't care about as much as we do. Um, so hopefully they come out big, but in particular that Phoenix game, just, I know it doesn't mean anything. It's a regular season game, but it would be nice to kind of just sun the sun them. Nice. That game. <laughs> that, that's a wee back game. Like right. you come out and dominate the suns, the nuggets, like we were just talking about, 
Nuggets Suns could be one, two in the West at that point. Denver beats them on Christmas. That's the Nuggets saying we're back. Like we're back and, and we're here. And that opening day, the opening night, uh, really kind of beating the doors off Phoenix for the Nuggets this last season. That yeah. felt good. That felt fun. So I think Christmas version will be great. I th- I wonder uh, the only other game I could say for marquee like there are some marquee ones Minnesota to me I'm like that would be an interesting one obviously you got the Towns Jokic Gobert that's Jokic. more opening night I think like yeah that's that, like, opening night for me but it's a fun like you just talk about yep. matchups I'm most interested in and then the other one if the NBA really wanted to market itself this way I 76ers Nuggets would be fun yep maybe that's yep. getting too far ahead of ourselves but I do think that the NBA could tell stories and one of those stories is the big man is back. Look at these two big men go go head to head. Absolutely, to me that would have been a cool one to do as well. So that was number two for me. 76ers is definitely 70, number two. I, Denver's probably not going to get the interconference game. <laughs> like that's just they they don't do that too often for the marquee game, and they probably wouldn't do it there. But that'd be interesting. Um, what is the most intriguing matchup outside of the Nuggets? Do you guys have one game you really want to see that doesn't include the Nuggets? I'm fascinated by this question because I feel in some years there's a very obvious answer to it. And right now I don't know. What do you think is the very best matchup in the NBA? There's not one that jumps out to me right now. That's Milwaukee good. Golden State for me. Really? Just Yeah, Steph Giannis. Like two guys that are impossible to stop, but for entirely different reasons. Like that is fun to me, Bucks Warriors. I could see that one. I mean, I think that one's pretty fun for sure. I, it's not natural to me though. Celtics Warriors, just because the finals to me is like a marquee matchup. That that well, that one to me feels pretty big. Um, I I'm surprised Suns Warriors isn't bigger here, and I think mm. it's because the the Suns, you know, you know, they petered out. I mean, that's the reason for it. But there is a part of me that thinks Draymond Green has been so disrespectful to the Phoenix Suns. And in particular, they've all been so disrespectful to Chris Paul. And Chris Paul has not helped himself by, again, petering out in the playoffs. But I kind of feel like that's one that we're sleeping on. And those games were always good in the regular season. And there's definitely some bad blood there. Yeah. I think there's one. Yeah, People forget that the Suns are actually really freaking good. I know. (laughs) I know. I know I'm supposed to hate the Suns. And they're so easy to hate after that flame out but the, the suns are really freaking good and they're probably going to be really freaking good again this year i love this one here dallas and the suns <laughs> a thousand percent <laughs> actually if you wanted the real bad blood game that's actually a christmas game right there right i guess the nuggets could have played the lakers and it would have been interesting if you could have got dallas i mean think about last year there's nothing sweeter than this the Devin Booker, Chris Paul being asked about Luca when they were up 2-0 and then both kind of looking at each other and doing the little smirk like smirk where are you kidding me? We're we're going to show you who this guy really is. And then proceeding to just get destroyed by Luca in the most like cocky and confident way ever. To me, you're right. Put those guys that I, I would almost forfeit the Nuggets game to get to watch Luca go smack the Suns again. That's another one. And I, honestly, they might trade eight and like at, on the 27th or 26th if they like play that game and get smacked again. Yeah. <laughs> so here, here's where I'm this is the take I've been warming up to. If it's a conference finals matchup and one of the Clippers or Nuggets goes on to win the finals, maybe we do this exercise next season and it's possibly the Nuggets Clippers. I just think there's juice there. I really do. I'm shoehorning you, it then. You do have a fetish with the Clippers, folks. I think they might be the two best teams out west. And I think that that conference final was freaking sick. And whatever, it was the bubble, but the the last time those two teams were healthy, they looked like the two best teams out West. So I'm interested to see how they look returning that way. It's too hard. It is funny, though, the Brooklyn Nets, nowhere to be seen on this schedule so far. Um, We didn't talk about this, but there is a chance Kevin Durant winds up in in Phoenix. And the move would would most likely be somewhere around December 15th when when these trades can happen. I believe that's the date. Um, So maybe there's a chance that the Nuggets are playing KD and the Suns on on Christmas, and he does make his way back here. Um, <laughs> but no Brooklyn Nets, and I can think that I think that kind of tells you where the NBA stands on the Brooklyn Nets right now. They probably, yeah. I hope, when the schedule comes out, that Brooklyn has like three national television games, and the NBA is just like we're <laughs> we're done with this. We're moving on from you. Um, New Orleans is another team that I think will be interesting. That I don't know where they fit into this equation because they right. don't necessarily have a nat- natural rival, but they might be a team we're more excited to see um, than people think. 
All right, that does it. Let's take another break. On the other side, we do have some quick news and notes from around the association that are kind of fun, fun and lighthearted. Uh, guys, at DraftKings Sportsbook right now, always a ton of stuff to bet on at DraftKings. Of course, use code DNVR when you sign up and download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. College football is back. So time to enjoy the tradition, the fun, the great offers from DraftKings Sportsbook to celebrate the best time of year. New customers right now can bet just $5 on any team and get $200 in free bets instantly, win or lose. Same game parlays, combine multiple bets into one for an even bigger payout. They got tons of stuff to bet on on DraftKings Sportsbook, of course, college football, whatever else you want. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app, use code DNVR, bet just $5 on any college football game or team, get $200 in free bets instantly. That's code DNVR only at DraftKings Sportsbook, must be 21 or older, Colorado only, one per new customer, minimum $5 deposit, $200 issued as eight $25 free bets, restrictions apply, see terms at DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook. Uh, gambling problem, call 1-800-522-4700. Uh, also, our friends at the Colorado Golf Association, they've still got this raffle going on. Get it on this. This is an incredible uh, dream golf vacation raffle, courtesy of our friends at the CGA, the Colorado Golf Association. Prizes include stay-and-play packages at Wailea Blue Golf Course in Maui. Whistling Straits, a Naples golf tour and Palm Beach golf tour, as well as a $5,000 gift card to Bandon Dunes. Uh, the deadline is August 18th, just a couple days away. So get in at uh, coloradogolf.org. That's where you can get your raffle tickets, coloradogolf.org. Get those tickets today. Remind you guys, we have the golf tournament coming up here in a couple weeks, our last one of the season. Kale, if you have that graphic or you, you can find it, I know I didn't prompt you for that, but if you find it, the DNVR kickoff classic Friday, September 2nd, Raccoon Creek golf course, um, 150 per player. These are always a lot of fun, man. It's like one of my favorite days of the year. Um, it'll be right when we get back from uh, Serbia. Um, I'll be out there. Should be a good time. If you haven't been sign up they're a lot of fun you get food you get all kinds of cool stuff and it's just a good time man being outside is a great time uh playing golf in one of these types of events and then you get to kick it with us and um you know just have a good time so check it out this is the last week to sign up for that i believe um all right some news and notes from around the association guys i don't know if you saw Giannis gave an interview Giannis is a funny one because he's very committed to milwaukee there's he's a low drama but every now and then every he says now and then. every now and then he says something like this. Go ahead and play it, Kel. He's asked about Chicago Bulls. I think uh, anybody who asks that question uh, that plays basketball, if he said no, he would be he'd be a liar. You know, uh, it's a team that uh, won uh, multiple championships. It's a team that one of the greatest players, if not the greatest player, to ever play this game played for. So it's 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 a no brainer. Everybody would love to play for Chicago. But down the line, you you never know. You know, you never know how life brings it. Maybe, maybe I play for Chicago, but uh, right now I'm committed to more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he, the little smirk. He knows. All right. He didn't have to say that, he and then he pivoted to. at the end. It was like, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe. So what's going on here, Harrison? You're muted. You mute. You mute yourself. Honest to God, why did he put that in there? Like Giannis has done this a few times. He talked about the Lakers. Remember a while back when he's like, who knows? Maybe we play together like in LA or something. Like, is there any theory? Can we put a conspiracy corner together? Like, is there any reason Giannis <laughs> keeps saying these things? Because, because being committed to the contract is not the same thing as being committed to being Tim Duncan. Um, and I just I think I think Giannis is a Milwaukee Buck. And by the way, stayed signed that contract immediately won. But are you guys terribly surprised at this point if he plays somewhere else before the end of his career? Denver. I'm, yeah, Jokic, I'm telling you, we're, we're going you, Serbia versus Greece. We're going to be out there for that game. Maybe we'll see Jokic, you know, whining and dining Giannis. Some nice little waterfront bar, you know, just saying, hey, man. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, Gian Giannis, Giannis is, is dropping on my power rankings because he – I don't know if you saw this quote a couple days ago. He said that the best player in the league is LeBron, 
And the second best player, I think he said, was Luka Doncic. So because of that, Giannis is a little lower on, on my club. personal power rankings. He ignored you know. himself and Jokic. Uh. <laughs> yeah. is, is he too humble? Is he Hold too on. humble? Um, it would be funny. He's just trying to diminish Jokic. So when he joins Jokic in Denver, his best friend, he's like, I'm joining the ninth best player. You know, it's, like, not, it's not a super team. This we isn't just wanna, a super team. Yeah. Like, we don't even have a top five player on this team. You know, like <laughs> just two top 15 guys. Um, I think personally, this is maybe Giannis's way of just reminding the Bucks that they need to stay competitive. Like, hey, man, mm-hmm. don't ever think that this is like easy. Like, I I always think Giannis is just a guy that'll be in Milwaukee, this or that. But I do wonder if players like him are becoming more savvy to the like, don't get comfortable in that chair, don't take a summer off. Like, hey, mm-hmm. we need to always be competitive. I just, it's a weird comment to have. And we'll see how Giannis handles that in the coming years. But I thought it was interesting. Yeah, um, he's like, he's like, I, I still remember when you signed and traded Dante Divincenzo to just get out of the tax. I remember <laughs> that he slipped that into the Chicago answer. You're like, hang on, PJ Tucker too. Like, they're, hey, I, you guys remember yeah. that? Like, yeah, you know, but he the, the thing that it's the Bulls, I don't think is surprising because he's an international player and. International players have this that's affinity true. for the Bulls and Michael Jordan a great because thing. you know that's that's the first insight or, or little bit of that was their entry point into the NBA. And I even remember when Arturis was taking the Chicago job, and like he thought of the Bulls as like you know the pinnacle of of NBA franchises because of Jordan and. I right. think just international people look at the Bulls way differently than than us do, right? Yeah. Than we do. They're kind of like a Lakers, Yankees. They they're just. Yeah. He was specifically asked about them too, though. Just 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 to be clear, he was hell of a question. Just, like yeah. I, I love whoever asked that question. Was just he being in like, Chicago? I think he was in Chicago. I think is the yeah. reason. But the what, about, right so, right. what about playing for the Bulls? What do you think? But he could give that whole answer without saying. But you never know. <laughs> he, he, had he put it there. in there as a total like LeBron taught me this one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in other great news from around the association, former Houston Rockets great Katino Mobley. I don't know. You guys, he's been doing this for a while. You can pull, go ahead and pull it up, Kale. Um, he looks old. He's not that old. As a fellow old, you can mute the music on this one, the, the voice here. But he has the gray hair. Like he's just fully gray. So when he goes to pick up runs, he looks like he's 70 years old. <laughs> he's giving, giving the business to NBA players. That's Christian Wood. He's yeah, just that's the Dallas Mavericks starting four right there. And look at how old he looks. Chat, take some guesses. How old do you think he is? Don't Google it. Don't cheat. Just tell us how old do you think look he is. Look at how smooth he is. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Baron Davis for a while had the shaved head and beard look, and I always thought that he should lean into looking as old as possible. Mm. LeBron... I feel like he keeps shaving his hair. I feel like he should just go bald with the. Is beard. that Nick Young? <laughs> it is yeah, Nick Young there, who's just like in awe of him. Yeah, that's the whole cycle through. Uh, I love this. I honest, my honest take from this is that some player who looks old should lean into looking old. LeBron, if he just like had the horseshoe bald head and the beard <laughs> while he was putting up thirty, ten, and six, it would be the coolest thing. I mean, the guy to do that, unfortunately, is Kyrie Irving. You know, but <laughs> by the way, doesn't look old. LeBron did old. do that right when there were questions about is he washed? And he's like, I'll just stop coloring the beard for like a month. I'll just, if you guys, just a couple of gray hairs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I dig it though. I feel like we people should lean in. And I just love the fact that he's only 46 years old, but he looks 46. like, <laughs> but he looks like he's 60. And he, when he's out there, he's still obviously 46 for an NBA player who stays in good shape is not that old. So I love that he could still. But based on that video, Christian Wood's defense has not improved. He's he's not taking the leap defensively. My Dallas stocks are down, Harrison. Yeah. Um. Next, take me on to the next one here, uh, Harrison. Jamal is in Australia. Yeah, he's in Australia. This is the least publicized like NBA trip of all time. Like nobody's posted about this. 
not the NBA or the Nuggets. Like I only knew it was happening because just people DM'd it to me or right. they were like, yeah, I went to this NBA store and just Jamal Murray was there. Um, <laughs> I, I saw people, one. Man, like his people need to get with us. Like we'll, we'll promote this yeah. stuff. What's going on, Excel? I Come saw on, one article um, about it before and like a couple after because he did like a little media thing there. Uh, but yeah, he's in Australia because the NBA is opening their first like NBA store there, and um, he's just there on like a, a promotional trip. So oh, that's rad. Oh, that's pretty cool. Look at him. Everybody, man, he he makes those guys look. That guy on the left is a real tiny king out there. Are these soccer players? I assume. Oh no, that's rugby. Oh, it looks players. like rugby. rugby. Yeah, yeah, rugby players. No, I think McDonald's that's players. Australian football. That's right. Oh, it is Australia. Oh, yeah. AFL. Yeah. AFL. There you oh, go. Sorry, yeah. Ozzy. That's our bad. <laughs> I love how Wynn sarcastically corrected me. And then he himself was corrected. <laughs> by Kale, nonetheless. The layers of being corrected by Kale. Ooh. <laughs> Tough one. Yeah. <laughs> Got him. Um, what else can you tell me about this trip, Harrison? Well, he, he just had a couple quotes there. Uh, he said just about coming back. Um he said, look, now that I'm here now, thinking how far I've come since then, it's night and day. Um, and then he was talking about just coming back in the playoffs, potentially potentially last year. He said, I wouldn't have been the player in the playoffs I am now um, or able to move and play the way I want to play. And then he was asked about getting back to his form in the bubble. And he said, no doubt that wasn't even my best, though. That's the thing. There's another level you guys haven't seen yet. Has he seen it is the thing I wonder. You know what I mean? Like when when he says there's another level. He's seen it in his mind. That's what I mean. Like, does that mean he is playing at this level? I'm so curious. Jamal, I'm so curious to hear what he expects of himself early on. We only hear from others. I want to hear what Jamal is. Jamal saying, like, wait, do you guys see opening night? I'm back. Right. Or is he like, <laughs> he's also like, hey, guys, first three months of the season, I'm going to be a little hobbled. I don't know. Yeah. I wouldn't um, draft me on your fantasy team. Uh, last one we have. I don't know if you guys saw reports from Sam Amico over the weekend. Hang on. The, the Nuggets interested in Carmelo Anthony. This stuff is funny, man, because I swear to God, like, there is a corner of NBA media, and it's a very successful corner, by the way, an extremely successful one. That just says things like this every couple months. Like, yeah. how many times a year do we get to the Carmelo to Denver trade? It's Free at agent? least once a year because it happens every August, every single off season. And then, like, I saw Singer like ends up like, con- hey, I, I'm told there's nothing to like, guys. What? <laughs> they don't even have a roster spot. Like, what? Are we- <laughs> I thought it was crazy that there were people actually that this actually became a discussion point somehow where people look at there's no roster spot and it's always I guess we're we're feeding into it because here we are talking about it but it's funny to me because it's like it always ends up generating an enormous amount of conversation and if you read that report as I did it said something like it would be neat if Melo went back but at this moment that's all speculation right it's it's like, like, people in the league are talking about it i always really laugh at those like reports are are we people in the league like could we qualify as those people like who do you think he talked to that said you know what would be cool Melo to denver carmelo anthony's agent <laughs> I won't say who. I'm not going to put anybody on blast, but I did see a sourced report one time at a summer league where the report was literally a like yell at a guy from across the way. A guy yelled back like <laughs> one word, and then there was a report based on that that conversation. So maybe that was like similar, like Carmelo Anthony. Hey, would you like to go back to Denver? He's like, hey, yeah, man, sure. All my options cool. are open. That's always home. And like people around the league are saying, there's there's interest here. I'm not kidding. That's probably how this source report came about. Somebody and, saw him at a McDonald's and just asked him. Yeah, that's yeah. right. I'm dying to I'm, know what this report was from Summer League. I, you got to tell me in the DMs. <laughs> you can probably guess it. All right, that does it for today, guys. Two more shows before we board a plane heading over to Serbia. You Two guys are going to want to check it out. Real quick, do you have the shirt graphic, Kale Handy? If not, we have up on, the, on dnvrlocker.com. We have a shirt available where all proceeds go towards our trip. This is a huge undertaking. We're very excited for it. Um, you're going to want to, uh, if you like the shirt, and I think it's great, buy it. Click on it right now. Support the trip. 
give us a little bit of extra money for to to make up for what we're spending on this one. There it is right there. A gorgeous shirt. On my screen, it looks almost fuchsia, but I think that's my screen. It's really red. It's, but red. it's a beautiful thing. Look at that. DMVR Nuggets Serbia edition. Um, that does it for today, guys. Tomorrow on the show, Director of Scouting. Is his last title? Director of Scouting. What is Rafael Juice? I'm, I'm going to have to get an official title. I'm not. I'm not sure what the official yeah, title Denver is. Denver Nuggets Super Scout Rafael Juke will be joining us tomorrow. I can't wait. We haven't talked to him. I think for a couple of years on the show, so it should be great getting his perspective about the team this year and just some of the things that are going on with Europe, Euro League, all of that stuff. And mm. then, of course, the nature of our trip for, to Serbia is about learning about Serbian basketball. I'm certain, as a guy who has spent more time in European basketball gyms, talking to different people, seeing how they train. He'll have some great insight on that. I'm very excited for it. So tune in tomorrow, guys, this exact time. Hit the like button on the way out.